Other bananas are going to make your opponents lose points like this rotten banana stack here. Hey guys, and welcome back to another Unfiltered Gamer board game review. And today's game up on the tabletop is Banana Hammock by Mind Ramen Games. It plays two to four players, takes about half an hour to play, and it's for ages eight and up. And in the game, Banana Hammock, you are monkeying around scoring bunches of bananas more than potentially your opponents and hoping to score the most at the end of the game. As you play the game, you'll be drawing cards from a deck. You'll be placing cards into either your crates where you'll be placing bunches of bananas or into your hammock, which you can store for later use. You can pull them up and you can place them down. And you can also play monkey cards or banana cards, depending on what you want to do on your turn. As you place down banana cards, you're going to be scoring them in crates, scoring points throughout the game or giving your opponents some rotten bananas. Sometimes your bananas are going to be eaten by monkeys and when that happens you're gonna get banana peels which you can use to stop other opponents from playing monkey cards and also score points in the game when basically a special card gets drawn from the deck you're going to have to eat your own bananas and eventually you're going to run out of cards and when that happens and you can no longer eat cards the game is going to instantly end and the player with the most bunches of bananas and points will win the game okay let's take a look down below I'll show you how to play the game what comes included and then we'll talk about the game up above Welcome to this crazy monkey game for two to four players. And currently we have it set up so that you can go ahead and start the game. In the game, you're going to be getting banana peels, the banana deck, and of course the barrel of danger, which is basically the card that will end the game. These cards here are not only the player references slash player aids, which will tell you how to play your turn, but also will instigate which monkey you're going to play as, whether it be Shifty, Mitz, Davey, R, Gorilla, William, Hobbs Jr., or DJ Monkey Feller. And so basically each player is going to start with one of these. And if you're playing a two player game, you can set aside the other two and simply place them in front of each player. Then make sure that you have your banana peels on one side of the deck and you're going to have the discard pile on the other side of the deck. This is then going to get shuffled. Make sure you do a good shuffling job for this deck here and deal out five cards for each player. So each player should get five cards. One, two, three, four, and five. Then go ahead and set the deck right in the middle here uh, with enough room on both sides. After you deal out the cards, you're then gonna take your barrel of danger and place it in the deck. And you're also gonna go ahead and shuffle that up because that card is the one that is going to end the game. So after you give it a good shuffle, then you're pretty much ready to begin the game. When you're playing the game, you're going to have one of two options. The first option is you can play a monkey, and the second option is you can play bananas. And when you play bananas, they're going to go into your crates, and crates will be right in front of you, right in your tableau. Additionally, you'll have a hammock, which is a face down area in front of you where you can place a card or pull a card from it on your turn, which basically is going to allow you to keep cards stored away from your opponent's greedy little mitts. And the game will begin with the first player, selected by, I don't know, the last person who ate a banana. Look at their hand, and then they're going to simply draw a card from the deck. Once they've drawn a card from their deck, they'll choose either monkey or they will choose banana. And in this case, we'll go ahead and choose banana. We'll go ahead and then go ahead and give out the cards, banana cards, to either the, your opponents, if they happen to be stuff like the rotten bananas. And in this case, we have two rotten bananas for my opponent, which is going to have a requirement how many cards you need to make a bunch and then in their crate, what that bunch is going to be worth. Additionally, there's going to be flavor text or basically text that's gonna tell you what the card does. And of course, what it is, whether it be a banana or a monkey. The other cards I have in here is going to be a bunch of nanners. I've got a monkey here, a spotty banana and a rotten banana. I do not have an extra rotten banana, so I can't give it to my opponent. I don't have any good bananas in pairs, so that is going to be it. Oh, actually, I got this one here, a bunch of nanas. That only requires one, so I can put it, I can create it, and that's going to score me two points at the end of the game. Then I can choose if I want to place a card down into my hammock. So I can choose to put this one in here. Let's make a deal. I'll go ahead and set that in my hammock, placing it face down, and that will end my turn. At the end of your turn, you'll check to see if you have five cards or less in your hand, and if you do, you're good. 
but if you don't, you'll need to discard down to five cards, and then you'll pass turn in clockwise order. The next player is then going to take their turn, simply drawing a card from the deck, and then choosing to play either monkeys or a monkey or bananas. And so what do I have here? I've got two rotten bananas I can give my opponent. I've got a spotty banana. I've got a ticking time bomb, which I can give to my opponent. I can place at one of their banana punches, and that will make them lose that at the beginning of their next turn. But I think I'll just go ahead and play a monkey. Uh, additionally, too, when you draw cards or start with something like this that has a little question, uh, exclamation mark, you're going to simply play that card instantly. And this one says banana tax. Each player with more than one bunch chooses a bunch in their crate to be eaten and then you draw a card. And since nobody has more than one bunch, that's simply gonna go there and draw a card. These cards do not count as your actions. I don't count as a monkey or a banana, so you can simply keep playing your turn. And so in this case, I'm gonna play, oh, I got another one of these guys here, rats. Discard all cards in each player's hammock. Players gain a banana peel for each banana card they discarded and you draw a card. And in this case here, um, go ahead and discard this guy here from the hammock and no bananas were discarded, so nobody's going to get these banana peels. Banana peels function just like bananas. You can play them, and when you do, they'll let you basically counter your opponent's monkeys. All right, now let's go ahead and... Oh, and I get to draw a card again. Let's draw a new card here. All right, there's a monkey here. So I can go ahead and play this monkey. I'm going to choose monkey for my turn. I will play this one here, monkey fingers. Look at another player's hand and steal one banana from it. If you can create a bunch using the stolen card, uh, it will instantly create the bunch, but do not draw a card for creating the bunch. Okay, so if I wanted to look at my at my opponent's hand, I could do that. What has he got? He's got a spotty and a, and a rotten. So I'll take that rotten from him. Then I can go ahead and play that rotten bunch in that player's crate. And that player is going to score negative two points at the end of the game. And then I'll check my hand size. Ending my turn, I have four, so I'm good. So pass to the next player. And that player is going to simply start, draw a card. And they can go ahead and bunch once again. I'll go ahead and play this DNA splice banana, which actually functions inter interestingly. Whenever somebody plays a monkey, that banana is going to move over to that specific player. End of turn, simply done. Draw and go. Pretty simple. This player here, draw a card and continue playing the game. And as you continue playing the game, you're just trying to score as many bunches as possible. Eventually, somebody's going to run into that barrel of danger. And that barrel of danger is rather crazy. Let me see if I can find it here really quick for you. Because what it does is when you draw it, here it is, you will draw a card from the deck. You will choose a banana card in your hand to be eaten. And then you'll draw a banana peel because it was eaten. Shuffle this card into the deck if a banana peel was eaten. However, if a banana peel was, uh, if a banana was not eaten, then the game is going to end. So you always want to have a banana in your hand to make sure that the game doesn't end, unless you kind of want it to, in which case you would make sure you don't have those cards in your hand. But regardless, the game will end, the triggering will end, and then you're going to go ahead and check to see who has the most points. And in this case, if we did check, I would have negative two on this side. This is going to score me negative two. This is a positive two canceling out, and I'd have two points here, which would make this person the winner. But it's very most likely not going to end that quickly but that's the basic idea of the game choosing to play a monkey or play as many bananas as you can in either crates or as to your opponent's crates and then of course hammocking your cards face down or pulling them up and unhammocking them to use them at a later date which will give you some flexibility whether you want to have it in your hand or not and that's the basic idea of banana hammock okay let's come up and discuss the game i'll tell you a little bit what i think about it and whether or not you should pick this game up on kickstarter link in the description so what's to say about this crazy monkey game in which you're basically trying to create as many bananas as possible, utilizing your hammock to keep cards out of your hand and prevent your opponents from taking them, but also remembering to not put too many in there because you can only pull one out on your turn or put one in. So you have to kind of maintain that hammock in order to score as many points as you possibly can. You're also going to be, of course, playing those monkey cards that will affect the style of play, gaining you more points, making your opponents lose points, stealing cards from their hands. Certain bananas will be in effect with those monkey cards, like for instance the DNA strip banana, the splice banana. This one here will move based on who plays monkey cards and will score you points. Other bananas are going to make your opponents lose points, like this rotten banana stack here. Giving them to your opponent is quite devastating, as well as this ticking time banana. If you're playing it on your opponent's stacks, they're going to lose them at the beginning of their turn. 
Also, the exclamation cards. The exclamation cards are going to take effect as soon as you draw them. They're not going to count as part of your turn, but you will get to draw a card after utilizing them, and they'll add certain unique ver variety to the game that changes it up, whether it be having extra cards be drawn from the decks, everybody losing cards from their, 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 their crates, and of course, the ability to kind of manipulate what you have on the field. Choosing to play bananas and as many as you would like or a monkey can be very important on your turn and determine how you want to play will during how you want to play will determine how well you do in the game and constructing your hand is just as important as constructing your hammock and of course what is in front of you. Uh, the barrel of danger. This is going to end the game when it is drawn and when it's drawn you're going to draw a card you're going to then uh, try and eat a banana from your hand gaining one of these special banana peels and then you will be able to continue playing putting it back into the deck however if you do not have a banana to be eaten the game will end and depending on if you want the game to end you might try and put as many bananas out as you can making sure that you don't have one to eat when that card comes around however maybe you want to keep a card in your hand because you're not doing so well all the monkey cards and exclamation point cards are also cards that will kind of let the players who are farther behind catch up unique little catch up mechanics involved in both the monkey and the event cards that change the game up making the game constantly going back and forth. It has a swingy feel to it. It has that take that aggressive tableau management and card placement feel throughout the game. The artwork is fun, it's cartoony, it's fresh. I like the artwork for this game quite a bit. It has a really unique feel as I place these banana down, bananas down on my field, reminding me all the different types that they do, and you can tell the difference between them based on what you play. The fact that as you get sets of these banana peels, you can create them for points or all the bananas have unique effects. Some of them will allow you to discard them as sets to do interesting things like remove the monkey cards from a player playing them, stopping a player from having a turn, as well as of course scoring negative points or even blowing up bananas like I said previously. A couple things with the game. The first thing is your hammock. It doesn't necessarily say in the rules how many cards need to go in the hammock or can go in the hammock. It just says that you can put one down or put one up. So I'm imagining there's no limit to the amount of cards that can go in the hammock. As well as, of course, I'd also want to know how you set the crates up. Are they set adjacently, which is kind of how I assume they're set up. That's how we played the game. Or are they set up in one stack? Uh, it also doesn't state specifically that you have to have the same type of banana. It shows in the picture on the rule book, but it doesn't specifically state that and I think there's just a little bit of rule clarity that can go into the game to make it a little easier for people to understand I guess these are little nitpicks but I think they're going to be beneficial just so people know because obviously some people who play the game quite a bit will understand it but if you're your first time jumping in kind of assuming certain things that normally I guess seem apparent but not always and not to every single person another thing too is some cards like this undercover cowboy here um, it says well, the next time a monkey card interacts with a bunch in your crate, it'll ignore and just okay. No, not this one. Sorry. The there's one of them in here. Ah, this one here, which basically says the player with the lowest number of total bunches steals a bunch in another player's crate. In the event of a tie, the winner is the tied player in next turn order, and you'd get to draw a card. Right. This is a catch-up mechanic and works really well most of the time. Usually in a multiplayer game, but in a two-player game, it can happen where somebody who has the most bunches can have a bunch of negative bunches and one good one, and the person who has less bunches with bunches of positive points can simply take the one positive set of crates or the crated bananas that you have and just leave you a bunch of with a bunch of negatives which kind of I guess contradicts the idea of what I feel the card means to do it not might not necessarily if you just kind of want to be crazy and swingy but I would actually change this card to something along the lines of whoever has the most points in the game as opposed to the most bunches of bananas but regardless if you like a game that's swingy fun it's got a little bit of an aggressive tableau management aspect playing monkeys dropping down bananas switching it up obviously the game plays even more with three and four players like more enjoyable with more players because more crazy antics go the game's got a lot of things you're going to be doing in the game but it's very simple as to how to play playing a card whether it be a monkey or playing bananas simply choosing to hammock or not drawing that card discarding it down to five in your turn and you just keep going with the game if you got games like exploding kittens and the like this is no more difficult than those games but definitely different in the play style of the game if you're interested in taking a look at the game banana hammock take a look down below in the description go ahead and pick it up for yourself see what else they've got in the campaign and let me know what you guys think about this crazy banana having game all right outro
Thank you guys so much for watching another unfiltered gamer board or card game review for the game Banana Hammock. And like I said before, link in the description. And you can also go ahead and check out the rest of our videos here on YouTube. Like, subscribe, and comment. Don't forget to hit that bell notification button. It helps us out greatly. And you can see the rest of our videos. We pop out one at least once every other day, almost once a day. Tons of Kickstarter games and promotional stuff. We got ton of good stuff in the works here. And of course, our website, unfilteredgamer.com, blog posts, giveaways, Kickstarter lists, and more. We got giveaways coming out very soon here. We're going to have two or three of them that you can go ahead and pick up, whether it be the game Mud uh, from Side Effects, the Pillbox games, you're going to have uh, Dungeon Drop, tons of cool stuff. And of course, our live stream every Wednesday, 6.30 p.m. PST. We play games. We have fun just like this game here we could be playing on the live stream you can see it and watch us play to determine if it's something that would be right for you okay guys that's all i got for you this time and as always i look forward to monkeying around with you next time